Diesel. Lord of the Weasels. Good morning. Hey, man. Chevy McFluff. How are you doing today? Cool. That looks great. Speechless. I know. It's another new day. Sometimes it makes me speechless, too. All of the hope and the promise of a new day. So exciting. So exciting. Good morning, everybody. Time to get up and at him. Commander. Good morning. Mama. Our sunbathing wiener and take a break from the tanning to come say good morning. Good boy. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Good morning. You're looking great. Thanks. I showered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When did we get Frosted Flakes? The man uncovered the whole time. I bought four boxes of cereal at once. I just saw the Fruit Loops. That makes sense. Off you go to work. Someone's gotta bring home the bacon. Sugar mama. <laughs> All right, love you. Have a good day. Right, I'll be here to pick you up. Keep them in line, people. Have fun. Always do. Off to work she goes, and back home we go. I'm chauffeur Josh today. So she's working a short shift. It's uh, about 11.30. Well, it's 11 quarter after 11 right now. I gotta pick her up at four. Mostly because the terrain right now, the battery isn't doing so good. So we're getting that looked at on Tuesday, which is tomorrow. So for today, since I'm not working, I'll play Mr. Chauffeur. And uh, in the afternoon, I'm gonna get the uh, terrain running so that we can take that here to pick her up. and at least get the battery and the, the vehicle moving today and then I'll put it on a trickle charge overnight so that in the morning when I'm at work, uh, she can start it up easily and bring it in to get all fixed up. We're getting a multi-point inspection, I believe, on it, uh, making sure that everything, not just the battery and block heater, but everything else is also in good working order. I like to make sure the vehicles are running well all the time. I want them to last a long time. It'd be nice for this truck, I want to have it for like another, uh, 15 years maybe I don't know it does everything I need it to so as long as I keep it running good and looking good and you know keep up with that little rust that's showing up on my rear fender well it's the only place where it's rusting right now and I got to get that looked at this summer keep up with stuff like that and all the little things fix them before they become big things it should last a long time and I don't want to be behind the big truck because I'm not in a big truck. Totally get it, but at least he's in the right lane. See, this way all the small cars can get past him when the light turns green. What bothers me is when two trucks line up side by side like this at a traffic light. Unless if it's sort of in town like this here and that truck was making a left turn soon. You know, it's not like uh, a set rule that you gotta be in the right lane. But uh, if possible, you try to line up the trucks on one side and all the cars on the left so that they can get going because you know, most of these cars, well, it's Sunday today when I'm filming this, pardon me, not Sunday, Monday, a long weekend, so not a lot of these people have anywhere to be or anywhere to go, but on a weekday, you know, everyone's in a rush to get nowhere. You just try to let them, try to stay out of their way. Is that a Yaris? That's a Yaris. Bravo, Toyota. That looks a lot better than they used to. Remember when the Yaris was like the ugliest car on the road? You could spot them a mile away. They were so ugly. That actually doesn't look too bad. I like that. We're gonna come up beside it if we can. It's a little blue car in that lane there. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get beside it because no one else here is in a, a hurry right now. Like I said, no one's in a hurry today. They did a good job remodeling that. It actually looks like a, a decent vehicle. I used to always make fun of Yaris's. Now I can't do that anymore. Then again, I make fun of everything. I make fun of everything equally, including myself, all the time. Aha, we are gonna come up beside it. See, they're really small, so they'd be really good on gas. This blue thing here on the left. Much better design. 
pull it, thing's tiny though. Oh, and I've got a little baby in the back seat too. Personally, I'd be a little nervous having a baby in such a tiny little car like that with like big full-size pickup trucks and big semi trucks on the same road as me. I think I was talking about this the other day, right? How I like to drive one of the bigger vehicles on the road. It's safer. You know, I get into an accident, I'll be just fine for the most part, unless if it's like really, really bad. But if you're in a tiny car, it's lose-lose. Like a tiny car like that, little Yaris, or a smart car, or one of those Chevy, uh, what are they called, Sparks? Spitting all over the place here, I should be wearing my mask. <laughs> That's why you gotta wear your mask, they don't spit on people when you're talking, like I do. But, uh, if I was in a tiny little car like that uh, on the road, you know, it's a lose-lose situation in that. If you get into an accident, you are the loser every single time. We're hoping that, you know, if we have uh, more than one kid, maybe three kids in the future, depending on how many we're able to have, uh, we need a bigger vehicle. I would definitely personally uh, vouch for the, the, the Chevy Tahoe or Suburban. Something that's family friendly, big, four wheel drive. You need four wheel drive here in the winter time. You never want to get stuck somewhere and get stranded with your family and with your kids in the vehicle. Uh, so you need to have big four wheel drive, high ground clearance, you can get over all the snow, lots of storage space in the back, and you're one of the bigger vehicles on the road. So like I said, if you get into an accident, the bigger the better, the smaller guy always loses. But that's just me. Britt is still at work and she's getting home in about an hour, hour and a half. So I'm quickly vacuuming the house. I've heard that this helps uh, with the baby making. We're hoping for a baby. So I was told if I do this, it helps. Guess we'll find out. All right, everybody. We're gonna be headed out to the terrain right now and see if we can get the old girl started. She's been on trickle charge for most of the night yesterday and all day today. So I should keep the battery warm enough that it should turn over. And if it does, that's a good sign. Uh, because my, what I'm trying to avoid is, I've got to go to work in the morning tomorrow. I'm going to be leaving the house around 7 a.m. or so. And Britt is going to be taking uh, the terrain to uh, her dad at GM Service. And we're going to get the whole vehicle looked over and uh it's gonna go into the shop there like i told you six point inspection i think it's a six point i don't know how many points it is lots of points can have the whole inspection the whole shish kebab is all going to be going down so i want to make sure that she can start it when i'm at work because i can't just quickly come home and get the vehicle started for her i gotta know if this triple charge thing's gonna work because the battery is very weak right now but all we need to do is get the vehicle running so we can get it there that has to happen tomorrow when i'm not here so Shall we? We'll quickly go and uh, see if she'll start. So like I said, we've had this charger on it, trickle charging. Okay, let's see what happens. You guys ready? Moment of truth. No problem at all. Good, that's a really good sign. Good. Okay, so I'm gonna get the Heats, the heat's seated up, the seat's heated up here. We're gonna go pick her up in just a little bit.